let us now talk about right derived functors. So you start with a functor f. So say f is some additive covariant left exact functor. So for example, you have functor like home d comma dash. So this is a covariant functor. So for covariant functors, you take injective resolutions. So let us do an injective resolution. So you have a resolution like this. So this is an injective resolution. And then say you apply a functor f to it. So since this is a covariant functor, the arrows are preserved. And this functor is left exact. So you have this injective map right here. So the kernel of this map, so kernel of this map is just f of m because this is still a complex. Now afterwards, you just delete this part. f of m, you just delete it. You don't do anything else with the maps. So you just delete this part. And we get, and we get this. So this is a complex, this is no longer exact because anyway exactness was preserved at just the first two terms of a, of a resolution by left exact functor. So exactness is not preserved, although this still remains a complex. So remains a complex means that the image just still lies in the kernel. So this is a complex. And since this is a complex, you can talk about its homology or cohomology groups. So we're going to talk about its cohomology groups because our index is increasing. So you're going from zero to one to two to three and so on. So this right derived functor are nothing but cohomology groups of this sequence. So this is kernel over image. So let us make this more precise. So let us put some maps here. So say this is say D0, this is D1, this is D2. So start with R0. So R0 of FM would be kernel of D0 over image of this map 0. Image of 0 is just 0. So kernel of D0 we said was F of M. So R0 FM is just F of M. So this was one, this was one of the first derived functors. Second derived functors say R1 FM. This will be kernel of D1 over image of D0. So that is what we are writing. So this I corresponds to kernel of FEI to FEI plus one. So this one corresponds to kernel of D1 and over image of D0, that is image of FEI minus one to FEI. So this is, so you have so you have like a large number of derived functors, R2FM. You have kernel of D2 over image of D1. So R2 will be right here, kernel of D2 over image of D1. Again, you're defining R1 at F of E1. You're defining R2 at F of T E2. So you're de defining it inside this module, just like you defined cohomology groups before. So that is pretty much it. So you started with a functor F, so from a functor f, you were able to construct a large number of derived functors. So for every i, you have a derived functor. So you have, for i equals to zero, you just have f of m. And then for one, you have here, two, this is this, and for three, four, so on. You continuously having these kind of functors. Now you take contravariant functors. So say fpn additive, contravariant, left exact functor for example this functor home dash t now since you have a contravariant left exact functor and we will always take these cohomology groups you take a projective resolution so let us see this so let us see this uh, now you have a projective resolution so arrows are going in reverse so you have a module m zero so you have p zero P1, P2, and now therefore you take a contravariant functor because you want this increasing sequence. So this contravariant is left exact. So you have this injective map here, but after that you cannot say anything. 
you just have a complex but exactness is no longer preserved so again you have you will delete this part so you are just going from 0 fp0 fp1 and so on but that would imply that kernel of this map kernel of d0 would be f of m now again same as before now you have right derived functors again so for a single functor f you have r0 r0 will be just kernel of d0 over this 0 is coming in because we have deleted this portion over image of 0 which is just 0 which is which will give you f of m then you have r1 which will be kernel of d1 over image of d0 and then you will have r2 r3 and so on so in general you have ri as hi f of this complex and you have kernel over image just like we have written before so kernel of from fpi to fpi plus 1 divided by image of fpi minus 1 to fpi now since we are using this home functor this is what is x so you apply the home functor it is covariant or contravariant that does not matter obviously if you have a covariant you use an injective resolution if you have contravariant you use a projective resolution and this is a th theorem in the Webel's book that uh, it does not matter what you use so you get this so this is the definition so x is nothing but right derived functor now notice that this is a bifunctor why is it a bifunctor there are two arguments coming into it one is the argument d so this d is what you apply here and the second argument coming is m so m is the module whose resolution you take so this is a bifunctor generally you know if you apply home like this you know the convention is that you write x like this you know fill in for m and if you use home like this you write x like this instead of dash you can fill up m so this is important because it reminds you that x itself is a functor because obviously it's a right derived functor and uh, it takes two arguments d and m so this is the story so you from a single functor f you have constructed a large number of functors r1 r2 r3 r4 so on and obviously r0 also so let us see left derived functor so for left derived functors you start with g which is an additive covariant right exact functor so for example both these functors dash tensor with d or d tensor with dash are both right exact and covariant so since we are going to talk about this uh, so we are taking projective resolutions here because we are going to talk about homology groups and these are covariant and projective resolutions so let us see this um, let's take the projective resolution f p0 p1 p2 so on you apply this g as a covariant functor to it so arrows are preserved so you have g of p2 g of p1 g of p0 gm 0 see the right exact functor so you have this thing right here now you have this map here we are going to write it as d0 d1 d2 again you have these left to right functors so this l0 of uh, gm this is just going to be kernel over image so kernel of this map is just now again you will delete this part but kernel would be just g of m and uh, so because this is right exact you know that this map is surjective and therefore 
kernel over image uh, just will give you just g of m so this one is slightly more subtle than the previous one you have the kernel obviously is g of m because you are deleting this m term with it so this thing got deleted so this is the kernel but the image is also zero the image coming in is zero precisely because the image is coming from here and the right exactness means that this point here which will get mapped to the image here actually gets mapped zero right here so anything which lies in the image of d1 actually gets mapped to zero right here so therefore you have as kernel of d0 over image of the previous map you will always have this as uh, g of m so you are evaluating this as at g of p0 so again the only subtlety is that why you have the zero in the bottom and that comes from if you apply d0 to d1 you will get zero so again you take a projective resolution with m deleted from the resolution so the sequence is no longer exact so therefore now notice that the index is decreasing so index is decreasing so decreasing index means you talk about homology groups so you put homology groups here so again uh, you have the homology groups which will be you know um, l0 where just uh, written so l1 g of m would be kernel of d1 over image of d2 l2 would be again kernel over kernel of uh, l2 would be here kernel of d2 over image of d3 and so on so you write this in general form now so for example for l2 you write l of i d2 means it is the map between gp2 to gp1 so gpi to gpi minus 1 divided by image of d3 so d3 is a map from gp3 to gp2 so that is gpi plus 1 to gpi so this is the left derived functor so notice that left derived functors are corresponding to these homology groups right derived functors are corresponding to cohomology groups so that is precisely because the index here is decreasing and the index here is increasing so again tor has two components you have the component m which corresponds to the resolution you take and the component d which corresponds to the functor tensor d you apply and this is what is the left derived functor for tensor product now we have taken a projective resolution instead of a projective resolution you can also take a flat resolution so notice that the tensor product whether you apply like this or you apply like this is covariant functor so the tor is always coming from the homology groups and uh, that is pretty much it so in this lecture we have covered what is x and what is tor